let's get an Irish take on the game now. Um, we can have a chat with an Irishman who lives in France, but he's actually talking to us from Tenerife. Work that one out. It's former <laughs> Ireland international <laughs> and Toulouse legend, Trevor Brennan. How are you? Uh, very good, thanks. Uh, as I said, I've uh, been in lockdown since October, uh, working hard, doing up my bars. And uh, I suppose this week's school holidays in France, I just said I needed a break, so I did my PCR test and negative, it came back negative. So yeah, a week in Tenerife, it's great to just get a bit of reality, to be able to sit down, have a pint and to be able to go into a restaurant and order a meal. It's just the simple things that, that we miss, you know? Absolutely, all above board and... Um... We're not jealous at all, are we, guys? Oh, got it. Mate, did you manage to catch the game yesterday? What did you make of uh, that win for France in Ireland? Oh, I did, yeah. Unfortunately, I found the bar three hours before the match, so <laughs> after about 15 large bottles of Magners now. Um, no, listen, I watched the match. It was fantastic. Uh, I, I don't believe that France played their best rugby. Um, I thought the scrum struggled. thought their line-out struggled a bit as well. But Ireland obviously gave their, you know, their fighting spirit they really brought to the table yesterday. And I think I've been a bit shocked by that. Yeah. How, how can you actually, like, judge a France-Ireland game considering that both both your, your sons play for France, uh, like, on you know, under 20s and under 18s and all that, and mm. maybe in the future will, we'll, you know, represent France at the senior level? Ah, listen... Um, I suppose you can take the man out of Ireland, but you can't take Ireland out of the man, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, I would feel very privileged that Leinster and Ireland gave me my first chance. But I feel even more privileged that Toulouse and France gave me my second chance. Um, I suppose I originally only signed for Toulouse for two years, but thankfully that was extended to five. Um, and I suppose I never really put any pressure on my kids to play rugby. They, they kind of did everything from judo to boxing to soccer, kind of rugby. They just came across rugby by, by mistake. They started off in a small little club in the village where I live. And I suppose they got detected uh, midi Pyrenees selection and were asked to, to join Toulouse. Um, I suppose I, I'd be a very proud father to see them putting on the French jersey. I just think that's fantastic. I just think it's a great story in the fact that I played for Ireland. And now that my kids have kind of followed in my path, but obviously they're wearing the French jersey. But I just think France has been it's so good to us. And I just feel like it's it's the country that, that has adopted us as a family, if that makes sense, Benjo. Yeah, I mean, for those who don't know, the, your, your <coughs> eldest is, is a, a prop who obviously is what is is under 20s World Cup champion uh, two years ago now with with the, the amazing generation of the Carbonel and all that and he was he was influential in that setup and the younger one who I didn't I haven't seen much apart from playing for the under 20s and bloody hell he impressed me uh, yeah. I think Josh is his, his first name Josh Josh that's a right proper yeah. lock a proper hard working grafting lock who on top of that has got hands and I think when he when he does a clear out. I think you understand uh, his last name. <laughs> yeah. he's not, he, you know he where he's from. Says, you know, unfortunately, the game has changed and the cameras and you've been watched for everything. But I think you would have suited rugby back 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> and there was a few less cameras. I think if I'd have played today, no, I'd probably only play two games a year. <laughs> 100%. And you've got, you've got a third one, do you not? You've got Bobby, your, your youngest. Is he your youngest boy? I've heard he's a real character as well. Is he, is he in the Toulouse setup as well or is he not in the rugby? Yeah, he's Toulouse as well. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah. He's, a, he's a big unit. He's probably six foot, 100 kilos, 14 years old. So, yeah, I think there's, he's, he's propping at the moment. But uh, I'd say his preferred position would be number eight. And you mentioned, Trevor, that um, no real divided loyalties when um, Ireland are playing France, very much an Irishman you are. Um, if Leinster play Toulouse, are you, um, are you a Toulouse or no, are you a I'd be 100% Toulouse. No, listen, I would, uh, no, I'd have to put my hand up and say, listen, I'd be shouting very much for France nowadays. But, um, you know, a couple of years ago when I knew a lot of the Irish guys, I would have played with O'Driscoll, Darcy, Hickey, Costello. And, uh, you know, when you see, when you, when I came to Toulouse and I was still watching these guys play, I would have probably shouted for Ireland. But very much now, I suppose, I'd, I'd be uh, an adopted French supporter. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to say that either, you know. 
we always mention the, the, the foreigners that come over to France and it's just the attitudes in which they do it. And that's mm. really, a, it, it then it speaks out to, you know, what, to the bloke that they are, but also to the, it reflects on how well they actually go within the team. And I know that you became a crowd favorite in, in Toulouse just because you played, you, you, you know, you gave your heart and soul to this team. I mean, you played back row, you played second row, you played off the bench. You were always uh, giving your 150% for the, for the... Is that just you or is that you buying into... Obviously, you still live in Toulouse, so following in love with the French culture, following in love with that extraordinary region where they... It's, it's that Toulouse is the heartbeat of the region. I mean, they absolutely are bananas over their rugby and their history behind it. So is that just you? Is it also you falling in love with Toulouse and the region and what it represents? I suppose, again, I probably just fell in love with the club and fell in love with the, the city of Toulouse and fell in love with the people of Toulouse. Um, because uh, I suppose it was the first time I ever felt accepted as a rugby player. Um, in Ireland, it's very much, I came from a very small club and played in a small club in a small village and didn't come through the school system. So uh, I think when I had played for Ireland, there was very few Irish players had come through that system. And... Um, I suppose I always felt judged in Ireland um, because uh, if your father was a bus driver, your mother was a waitress in a hotel, it was just, you know I mean? You just didn't, you always just didn't fit into the, that class. But the, I suppose the first time I ever really felt accepted as a rugby player, as just Trevor Brennan, the man, was when I signed for Toulouse because it was just, it was carte blanche, uh, as they say in France. It was just, uh, yeah, they accepted you for what you did on the pitch and what you did off, off the pitch. And I suppose... You know, I mean, it was a great generation of players like, you know, William Savat, Yannick Brew fighting it out for the hooker position, Ben Wallacool, Sean Baptiste Pooks, myself and Fabian Pelouse, you know, f you know, F Fabian, obviously a legend in French rugby, you know, but packing down with him in the second row, we had the Macca brothers, they were the only two English speakers at the time. Um, I used to have to fight fight with them all the time to tell them to stop speaking Tongan, but um, <laughs> no, listen, it was it was tough to fit in fit in the first few months because the language barrier you know the language barrier was a was a massive massive thing but um, you know I loved the whole social thing and you know there was a few guys there that were brilliant who spoke fluent English the likes of William Servat Emil and um, they they were fantastic you know William was a great guy I suppose you compare William to you know one of them guys who did a lot for players on the pitch and off the pitch. You know, he'd have barbecues, he'd invite you over to his house. It was just little things like that that just made, made me say, listen, I'm going to give this a go. You know, every, every once a week for two hours, I did the French lessons for two hours on my day off. And uh, I suppose that helped as well. Um, but now, listen, when I finished playing rugby in 2007, there wasn't a lot to go back to Ireland. Uh, Ireland was in a, a massive uh, crisis, as was most of the world. <laughs> We had a massive uh, crash in Ireland, the property sector and the banks and stuff. So um, luckily enough, I had opened the bar while I was still playing in 2004. And, you know, my rugby ended on Saturday and I was in pulling points on Monday. I was going to say, you mentioned William Servat's barbecues. I, I think you've probably returned the favour to that lot a hundred times uh, over with those bars. Of Guinness. <laughs> uh, in fairness now, you know what I mean? I, I'd be one of them guys, I'd be still very involved with the club and I'd still know a lot of the guys and a lot of the guys would still come to my bars for food and stuff during the week and at the weekends after games. And I suppose I've got to know a lot of the, how would you say, the foreign players, you know, Cheslin Colby, Jerome Kino, Charlie Fermanagh, Pete Yaki. You know, I'd be very much that person who would welcome them into my house now and have a barbecue and a few beers because I know what it's like and I know how hard it is to fit in. Like, as I said, you know, when I first came over, there wasn't that many foreigners playing in France. I was the only kind of English speaker. Um, I said, I had the two Maccas, but they spoke the whole time in Tong Tongan. Um, I was lucky enough, Gareth Thomas joined us in 2005, and I had a drinking buddy and someone to speak English with for, for two years, which was <laughs> fantastic, and he was a great bloke. And everyone's talking about Antoine Dupont at the moment. You mentioned a, a few of the current Toulouse crop that um, come and have a beer. Has he, has he been in? Well, Antoine's been in a few times, yeah. But listen, we have an old saying, what happens to Brennan stays in Brennan's. But... <laughs> <laughs> good uh, uh, no, listen, they're all good guys. You know what I mean? Antoine's fantastic. It's the same as son, Josh. Josh is playing with him at the moment. Josh just signed a two-year deal with Toulouse. So, um, yeah. Josh just said he's very humble and very down-to-earth guy. Again, you know, 
Um, when he plays with Toulouse or he plays with France, he just he, he just seems to bring the game to another level, doesn't he? I think yesterday Ireland had obviously done a lot of homework and had tried to, you know, I think, you know, put a lot of pressure on him and stop him from playing. But um, we just seen a bit of brilliance for the first try. Um, you know, France got into their offloading game yesterday and which, which led to the first try. And more more generally on this this France side, obviously there's a strong um, Toulouse flavour when everyone's fit. Um, what do you make of the job that, that Fabien Galtier and Sean Edwards have done? And, and we've mentioned Thibaut Giroud, Thibaut Giroud. We've had him on the, the podcast behind the scenes. Um, they look fitter, they look better defensively, but they look stronger mentally as well, don't they? Yeah, I suppose uh, French teams... Uh, wouldn't have travelled well in the past, whether it be European Cup or international rugby. But I just think France rugby has gone through uh, in the last ten years. I suppose going back, you know, to the World Cup where they reached the final, but you know, playing very badly. You know, they haven't been coached well. Um, and and you know, they've had Jack Brunel, they've had uh, Philippe Saint Andre. You know, just it, it, Guy Noves, You know, just it. I just think what Fabian has brought, he, you know, William Sabat, obviously, he works on the scrums, the pack, the mall. Sean Edwards, um, fantastic for defence. Uh, Laurent Lebeat, um, attack. Um, as you said, that guy Thibault, just, he's an amazing record. Everything he's done, like from NFL to athletics to, you know, he's just brought them to another level. Um, I think a lot, a lot of French packs in the past would have blown up after 60 minutes. But certainly now they, they can go for 80 minutes plus. Um, I think yesterday they didn't really play that well, but I don't think they were a let play. Um, but I'd say that that's every, every team has one bad game in them. And I think yesterday was possibly, you know, the French's, that was that one bad game.